All right, so here's a quick video showing you how to install my Flex Fuel RMS 600 fuel pump. I'm not going to show you how to take off the cover. There's a lot of videos out there showing you how to get to the filter box already. Hey guys, like I said before, there's lots of videos on how to take the cover off. We are going to take the air filter box off to get to the fuel pump. All you have to do is take off these two clips right here, give it a nice tug, and that will just pop itself right off. And then you're gonna have your fuel pump right inside of here. Unbolt these two bolts after you've cut this pipe off, after you've unplugged it, you're gonna take it and you're gonna twist the pump. Twist it like that. And it's gonna come up. It's not gonna come up the easiest. It's you gotta have to work with it a little bit, but it will come up. But it is locked in, so you guys know don't try just this pull is it. a line that slightly needs to be tweaked to be lined up. It's a ball and head setup. I'll show you in the next video, the next clip what it's gonna look like when we're done. But we've had several clients and shops, they all have their own way of doing it. Some people just put a screwdriver here and something here and then just move it out that way. Some people will just take some long needle nose and go like that. <clears throat> Everybody has their own way of doing it. I'll show you um, what it looks like when it's done. And the other alternative for those of us, for anybody wondering why we don't just replace this line, it's actually pretty extensive. Everything would have to come off. And from what I understand, you have to drop the engine slightly um, to get the entire fuel rail out. And then it'd be additional cost for the custom fuel rail. Plus obviously all the extended labor versus just doing what we do here. Okay, so what I do on the ones that I do, I just got a mallet right here. I literally just, after I do that first bend, I hit that down slightly, nothing crazy. And this now will screw right on by hand, as you see. Now, when you pull this closed with a wrench, you're obviously gonna pull that stainless steel fuel line into that. So then you're gonna take it back off and you're going to look and we will see that the ball and head is sitting in there nice and flush. thing I did leave out is after I get this uh, finger tight, as much as I can, then I'll use a wrench. I go to the point, not if I do bottom out on it, I'll come back out a couple turns. I put a screwdriver or anything. You can use a wrench, the 17 wrench you're using, you put right here and just kind of pry that a little bit while everything is connected. Then we're gonna pull this back out and you're gonna see that it's completely flush. Right. And this is after removing it. You can see it's lined up straight and it's gonna pull it right into it. And again, it's a ball and head. So it's gonna go into that little groove. Well, the way that I do it, everybody has their own way of doing things. I put it on right there, nice and snug where I, where I need it. I actually bent this up slightly out of the way, but also on an angle that I'm able to get to a little bit better. I cut it where I need to cut. After that, I then loosen this right here completely off. And then I take the hose and, you know, work it on there all the way. And then I screw that back on. It's easier to get this on for me and our techs, at least, with it not being attached here. But we do attach it here first to get the right cut in.